This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. And good morning, good afternoon, wherever you happen to be on this lovely New Year's Day. Uh, at least here in L.A., it's lovely. It's, we had a couple of days of rain, a lot of rain. I know we are here in California. We complain when it rains for a day. The funniest thing is the drivers. Oh, my God. It could be a light, light drizzle, and you'd think you're in a mess of blizzard the way people drive. We're just so not used to having you know wet roads. Anyways, maybe it's a good thing that they're driving so carefully. Anyway, just want to wish everybody a happy new year. I'm glad that we are seeing many of you here. I did not expect it. Debating, should I even do it? Should everyone's going to be sleeping. But then again, if you're back east, it's noon. You better be up by now. And um, I had to get up real early because I realized I left my laptop at the office on Friday. And we were closed on Friday officially, but I had some cases that I needed to see. So I made arrangements. I brought my laptop with me and I left it there. All of a sudden this morning, I'm getting ready for my show. I go, wait a second. <laughs> Where's my laptop? I said, oh, I remember I took it with me. So uh, I had to go rush to the office and get it. Um, I was going to do it last night when I realized it really, but it was like, it was just pouring. I mean, it was even, I didn't even like to drive in it. So anyway, so um, here we are on uh, New Year's Day. I hope some of you have some questions, burning questions about your pets. So uh, let's hear them. Easy way to get a hold of me. If you're on Pet Life Radio, you can just go on to PetLifeRadio.com, click on shows, ask the vet with Dr. Jeff, and join me here live on Zoom, kind of like telemedicine. Um, you can also call in at toll-free 877-385-8882, 877-385-8882, and get me live here. Of course, to join me here on, on Instagram Live, just come on in, and you can ask away. I'm waving, I'm waving. Hopefully I'm getting everybody. So yes, any questions you may have. I just did a great segment on Friday with uh, Michael Hearn. Um, he, he may have posted it. You'll be seeing some segments of it. It was a, a great uh, Instagram. It was a live that we had just a great time. He's such a great person and animal lover. Great talking to him. And then Mason. Mason is doing well. I'm so happy to report. He is in a soon, hopefully, according to the, uh, the people, uh, going to be in a permanent foster home. They're going to planning on adopting him. Uh, it's not official yet, but he is just thriving. He is just doing great. I think I posted a video of their son playing ball with Mason. And here's Mason just, he has not been this happy in years. I, I remember the first time I saw the video of him in that, in the cage at the shelter, when Wags and Walks adopted him, pulled him out of Downey shelter. Oh, he was like the saddest eyes on the planet. And to see him now is just a joy. This is something, you know, when you talk about viral, we're up to like 7.8 million or 7.4, some crazy number. I think it's 7.4 million views. That's a lot. And a lot of comments. Thank you very much. But it's so great just to see this dog just thriving and being so happy. And um, God, I, these are the best cases where when you can make such a difference in a pet's life. So uh, I am thrilled beyond belief. Um, hopefully you guys are too. And if you've seen him and just, if you could see a dog smile, he'd be smiling. You could see it in his eyes. He's just having a blast. So that's a, a happy ending. We're, we're uh, well, it's not, not an ending yet. So is the foster keep Mason, they are kind of planning on it so far. I you know they have another dog too. I look a little like a Bichon kind of dog and they get along great, but the little boy is in, enamored with this dog. So with Mason. So hopefully uh, that's going to work. And let's see what else can we do. So anyway, um, any questions, bring them on. And uh, meanwhile, as you know, I like to peruse the news and uh, there's not, ooh, ah, ah, skincare tips with dogs with deep wrinkles. All right. So I answered a question like this on my AMAs. It's not posted yet, but I'm going to answer it for you. And so basically the problem with wrinkles, when you look at your Sharpays and you look at a lot of your bulldogs, that they get something called skin fold pyoderma. That is an infection deep within the skin folds. So obviously those are areas that really need a lot of extra attention when you're bathing a dog, when you're cleaning a dog. And sometimes because these folds, you have now a dark, moist environment. That's a perfect environment for bacteria and yeast. So the key really here is um, these areas 
facial folds, skin folds in the back of the neck, the top of the head, in the case of a Sharpe, they need to be cleaned very well. So the, really the best thing to do is uh, you want to get a good um, antibacterial and antifungal shampoo, spray maybe, and or wipes. The, the Malachite wipes, for example, are very effective and you want to keep that area clean. Then I love a product. I use a lot of it and it's perfect for this type of also interdigital pyoderma. Those are the same type of infection that are in between toes or at the bottom of the feet. And the reason why those are so exposed and it is so common to see infection in those areas again is because of the moisture. And when you look at pad tissue and you look at nose tissue on a dog, it's the same tissue. That's the only areas on a dog's body that have what are called ecrine sweat glands. Those are the sweat glands that they actually sweat, which is why a lot of dog, often a dog's nose is cool and wet and their feet also can sweat there. So anything in those areas that you have in between the toes where it's dark, it's moist because of the moisture generated by the equine sweat glands. And again, same thing, perfect areas for bacteria and yeast infections. So the key really there is to spend a little more time, ask your veterinarian. If not, you can ask me if you're one of my clients for Neo Predef powder. It is the best ever. It is a powder. So it's drying because of the nature of it being a powder. It has anti-inflammatory, anti-itch, antibacterial, antifungal. It's everything mixed into this powder. And because it's a powder, it in, in itself is just drying. So I love Neo Predef. It works really, really well. Now, last resort, if you have some of these dogs that have chronic problems because of the deep skin folds, we do what's called, this is what I like to do. I do a lot of surgery. I do a lot of plastic surgery. And this is called skin fold reduction. I do eyelid surgeries, things that, that are functional. And mind you, you're probably laughing. Oh yeah, of course, an LA fan is going to do plastic surgery. Oh, <laughs> when you think of surgery, plastic surgery, repairing problems like this, it's because of a medical issue. Now, they're always at battle in plastic surgery amongst people, especially form versus function. And in, I hate to say it, but in people plastic surgery, it's more about the form than it is the function. You know, people are doing plastic surgery procedures to improve their looks, their form, but functionally it doesn't change a thing. Now, sometimes function wins out. That's okay. Now, in veterinary medicine, it's all about function. We don't really care about the form. In fact, you take that Sharpe where the wrinkles are, it's hallmark, and we're going to do some skin fold wrinkle reduction. We're going to remove those wrinkles. Um, that is because of function, not form. So anyway, and in the eyelid surgeries, they do a lot of the, the skin repair, the, 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 the sliding patch grafts. Uh, that's all to correct gaping wounds after, say, trauma or like a dog bite or a car accident, whatever it is. And this is what we do to close the gaps of, of certain procedures, say surgical procedures that are really considered plastic surgery, which is really what it is. So anyway, but it's all about the function, not the form in veterinary medicine. So yes, it is plastic surgery and I enjoy doing it. I have perfect cleft palates. I, I fix those, the hair lips. These are great surgeries. I mean, again, when you think about the, the defect, and I have some great pictures of like a bulldog guy to do some. Uh, uh, cleft palate surgery on and and um, the hair lip. And um, I mean, this dog is a new dog. So plus it looks, I mean, it looks totally normal. It's good stuff. All right. Anyway, I think we touched about the, on this. Oh, and any more questions, just keep them coming. But one of the things that we're seeing now, and you know, again, brought to light also by the story with Mason being a shelter dog, that we are seeing more and more dogs in shelters again. Unfortunately, more and more dogs being put to sleep again. And it's really due to a number of things. First of all, our lifestyle, because of all the, the many, many more dogs and cats that were adopted from shelters during the meat of COVID. Now, fortunately, those people are now getting back to work. And because of that, they're having less time. And they're realizing that the time commitment that is necessary to keep this pet is greater than expected now that they're back at work. And so what are they doing? They're bringing these dogs back to shelters. Also, the adoption rates have slowed down back to what they were. So now we're seeing more animals brought in, more bad breedings, and less animals being pulled out. And uh, it's sad. So 
if you know anybody or if you can handle another pet. I have 10. You could do it. I know you could do it. That if you can, uh, and and I, someone I just saw, I think it was TikTok. I don't remember the name of the of the rescue, or but they called them Oodles of Doodles. And I mean, the first thing, really, really cute dogs. I mean, so many. And that's the bad thing. So many doodles. So what's happening is we are seeing just too many dogs out there. And uh, I think it's also just bad breeding, I guess. So anyway, keep that in mind if you can, uh, as far as going to a shelter and uh, take care of it. Also, I want to talk real quick. And now I know I'm not complaining. <laughs> We're still in Southern California and I'm very happy here. But cold weather, there are stories. Look what happened up in Buffalo with the blizzard that, I don't know, countless amount of people died. I mean, it is people. There was a story about a lady who was stuck in her car. Her cell phone was started working and then the battery went out and they fi- finally found her. She was dead. I mean, it's terrible. So, if it's too cold for you, it's probably too cold for your dog. Now, doesn't mean the dog can't go out for a walk. You know, people always say, well, yeah, but look at that. He's a husky. Look at sled dogs. Ah, yeah, that's great. But if you remember, these Malamutes, these huskies that are pulling sleds, they are working dogs. When they're working, just like us, when they're working, your body is generating a lot of its own heat. But just sitting there and not being able to move, I mean, there was a movie out, I'm sure you remember it. If you didn't, you should see it, Eight Below. And it's about a whole team of sled dogs that were for, I forget exactly what happened and why, but they were left unattended. And they, whoever was tried to get back, couldn't get back to them until the, the snow, the terrible snowstorms subsided. And I think it was in spring when they finally got to go back. And you, I mean, some were alive, but some were dead. So it's too cold. So they have to have shelter. They have to have shelter from the wind especially the places that, that we know have uh, wind chill factors. Um, I know Chicago is tough. Yeah, the, the Midwest, Minnesota, Kansas City, these areas get so cold. I remember when I was, I was working with Target and they're based in Minneapolis. I was there for the very first meeting. I was there in spring. And I noticed that all the buildings downtown have these like, I call them the hamster trails. They're buildings attached on the second floors. So basically you can go from building to building throughout downtown and never go outside. <laughs> It's lazy. It's fully here. Why would you do that? It was until the next time I went back was in February. Oh my God. Now you know why. You you didn't even want to walk outside the hotel. I mean, literally freezing. So um, we got to be careful with our dogs. And if you can keep them indoors, let them in or make sure they have like a a dog house, something where they could um, escape from some of the cold. Uh, space heaters are great. Keep that in mind because don't just think, oh, well, they're a dog. Um, they're cold. We'll take care. Anyway, don't go away. We'll be back after these short messages. I'm waving to some more of you. And um, we'll be back in just a few minutes after these words from our part. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio. PetLifeRadio.com. And welcome, welcome back. We're here live with Dr. Jeff. During the break, I had a really a uh, couple of good questions. So let's uh, let's share them. Number one, dog sneezing. Is it a cause for concern? Flu, foreign body, etc. cetera. And uh, it can be one of many things. I'm really actually dealing with a dog right now that is totally fine. But when it has a sneezing, it goes through sneezing fits. So when we have a foreign body, uh, it's more likely than not that the it's on one side. I mean, can a dog inhale two fox tails in one? Yes, it can. Have I seen it? Yes, I have. But 90 plus percent of the time, it's up one nostril. So first thing is, 
They seem to be very uncomfortable on that one side. There may be some bleeding or discharge on that one side. If it's getting infected, it would be mucus. If it's fresh, if it's destroying some of the tissue, it might be some serious, like a bloody discharge. They will often rub their nose, paw at their nose, and rub along the carpet or a wall on that side. And there's a lot of, you could tell they're uncomfortable. And so if it's springtime, I'm thinking like a fox tail, and we'll have to go up and take a look. Now, if it's a polyp, if it's something that's not seasonal, and it, uh, it, it can almost manifest exactly the same way. You go up and you see a polyp. If it's a flu then or, or any kind of respiratory disease, it's usually bilateral. You're seeing it both sides. And so the discharge will be on both sides. They'll be doing a lot of sneezing fits, et cetera. It's not, again, it's not impossible, but you don't usually get a polyp both sides at the same time. So you have to look in the likelihood, depending on it's unilateral, meaning one, it's usually one side, or is it bilateral, both sides. And then you go from there. Obviously, you can also, we sometimes will go up with a swab. If we suspect an infection because of a mucousy, purulent discharge, we might go up with a swab and culture it. We can go up with it with a, a, some sort of scope. Most general practitioners like myself just use an otoscope. Now, if we suspect something is literally much farther up the nasal passage, the cavity, then you might have to send to a specialist who has a, some sort of an endoscope or a laparoscope where you can actually go up with, with a scope way higher and almost to the back, to the cribriform plate, um, to the sinuses as they re reach and go to the back of the mouth and take a look that way. I've also found some things behind the soft palate that was causing a nasal discharge and a lot of snorting and sneezing. So these are all possibilities. Some of them are pretty easy. Some of them are not so easy to diagnose. And, um, and we, we have to be persistent. The one that I was telling you about, I think I'm going to send it to my, my good friend and colleague, Dr. David Feldman, um, because it's going to need to be scoped because I, I can't get high enough up and it's a small dog to really do any good. And I don't want to anesthetize the dog twice. So I'm going to send him to David and um, we'll, we'll go up there. So here's my almost finger on senior blood test and it came out good. That's great. So when, and this is a perfect example. Thank you so much, New York Yankee 7, that People often will tell me they do or don't want to do something because he's old. And I say, whoa, 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 age is not a disease. I mean, we'll have to deal with it. But first, let's find out what kind of shape he's in. So, and my Labrador was 15 when I did a major surgery on him, Labrador no less. And he was a big boy. And I'm glad I did because even though the people said, no, he's 15, you shouldn't put him through all that. If I didn't put him through that, we'd have to put him to sleep within a week. So, because it was a bloody, disgusting, huge tumor and it was bad. So took his blood, did his chest x-rays. He came out clean and I, we did it. And I literally removed this tumor, but I finally had to put him to sleep at 16 and a half. He went a year and a half and didn't, not because of the tumor. It was because he was 16 and a half, a Labrador. So um, yeah, no, don't make decisions uh, just on age. Any reason why I shouldn't allow my dog to lay on a heated blanket? Great question. And the answer is yes, there are some reasons. And this is, the, the, here it is. When we do surgery, we used to use heating blankets. Now we're using heated tables, all right? Or we're using these water circulating pads. Why? Because the heat generated in a heating blanket a, on anything literally higher than the warm, the lowest setting, actually being the dog falls asleep, it can burn the skin. And I've seen it. I've seen it happen to us at the hospital, which is why we stopped using these blankets. Accidentally, it wasn't meant. Someone accidentally thought they were turning it off and instead, they turned it from the lowest to the highest setting, walked away. The dog was coming out of anesthesia, was resting, and you know, finally went home. Everything was fine. Two days later, there was a little burn on his back. And oh, my God, I, I knew right away, probably that was that's what probably what happened. So I am not a fan of electric heating blankets unless if you use it properly. That means that you, you want to cover it in a blanket or a towel, that you want to keep it on warm setting and check the dog and make sure either you move the dog, right, regularly, or you move the pad. Now, one thing I'll, I'll tell you, I'll share with you, because this is so common, and you see, I see this when dogs go to groomers. So they have these. Now, I, for example, I no longer use dryers at our hospital that have heating elements. I use dryers. You ever put your hand on the back of a vacuum cleaner where the, the air coming out of the exhaust is warm, right? That heat is just the heat generated by the electric motor. There's no heating elements in that. And that's what the kind of air dryers we use at the office. Why? So you have the ones that look like the oversized hair blowers are on a stand. You've seen them in grooming facilities. 
unless someone's there moving it back and forth. What, but if, what happens is you set it on a cage and the dog is lying down in that cage and finally just sits there. That jet stream of hot air is hitting one spot until that dog moves again. And sometimes they don't. And it's not hot enough to generate a burning sensation right now where the dog will get up and move because they're not stupid, but it's just warm enough, but it's there long enough and it literally will create a burn. And again, I've seen it many of those in dogs coming from grooming parlors. So I am very cautious, very careful, uh, keep it low setting. You may have to be there with them. If you're going to use a hairdryer, which is fine, just like your own, try it someday. You'll feel, see what it feels like. Take that hairdryer and keep it on one spot. Trust me. You won't do it again. And that's exactly what's happening with these dogs. So be really, really careful. Yes, when you have a senior dog like that, it is more appropriate not to wait a full year. Remember, dogs mature much faster. They say one to seven. That's maybe an oversimplification because it depends on so many factors, um, including the size of the dog and the, the breed of the dog. But whatever, it is what it is. But because of that, when you have dogs that reach those advanced ages, I would prefer to see them every six months to monitor their behavior. Or sooner, I always say this too, there's no hard, fast rule. The dog is exactly the same from everything, attitude and, and looks good and eating well and normal stools, right? Six months later, then chances are things are okay. Nothing's changed. Likewise, if three or four months later, appetite starts to change, they start getting, they get more sluggish, they appear to maybe be losing weight, then don't say, oh, well, the doctor said six months, I got two more months. No, you go in right away. So these rules make me nervous sometimes. You just got to read your pets. No, I would say it all the time, know your pets, know what their norm is. And then from that, you'll know what things are not right when things are becoming abnormal. And then you take them to have checked. Yeah, there was another one. Ear care. So ear care is very, very important. Uh, we see a lot. It's one of the more serious potentially and common problems we see in dogs are ear infections. And routine cleaning is essential. You should have your veterinarian teach you, show you how to clean an ear. You want to get a good ear solution, ear cleaning solution, and let the solution do the work for you. There is a safe way to use a cotton swab to help clean the ear. And you should have your veterinarian show you that as well. But as far as the cleaning, you put the, the solution in, the ear cleaning solution or the ear rinse in, do a lot of massaging. What you need to be shown is where and how to massage a dog's ear because all too often people are just massaging the skin around the ear, but they're not getting around the canal. You have to learn where the landmarks to feel that cartilaginous canal. And that's what you need to massage and massage vigorously. So the stuff suds up. One of the reasons to do that is that the debris at the bottom will come up, all right, with the heavy massage. And then what happens is when a dog typically has a lot of fluid in their ear, what do they want to do? They want to shake their head and let them shake because a lot of that crud will just come out like fly out when they're shaking their head. And then the balance you can get with a uh, cotton swab or your finger with a wad of cotton. I don't like gauze as much because it's a little more abrasive, but once you're shown the proper way to ear clean, it should become part of your basic routine, home care routine. That goes along with cleaning the eyes. That goes along with brushing teeth and brushing the coat, et cetera. These are things that should be done. Now, the one thing that you could be shown a zillion times, and you probably still won't ever want to do it, is anal glands. Now, if you are bold enough to try it, be my guest. But I'll tell you one thing. All it takes is one time to get squirted in the face with the anal secretion, and you are never, and I mean never, going to try it again. So I, so one thing, I still to this day, and I'm pretty good at it, I hate doing it. First of all, it's the worst smell ever. It's so disgusting. It's so messy. The dogs don't always love it. Anyway, but someone's got to do it, and it's unfortunately not going to be you. So, so it's going to be me or my team cleaning the anal glands, but it's a uh, I, not, it's not pretty. What can I tell you? All right. Anyway, if any more last questions, I got some waving. Thank you. Thank you. Wave. All of you joining. Thank you so much. Please check out if you haven't already, please check in on Mason. Just follow some of the string that I left and you can see the follow-ups. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing. He is, it's such a great dog, great story. 
So I'd love you to see it. And um, and uh, yeah, go ahead and view it. You know, maybe we can get up to 8 million views. That would be really cool. All right, guys. So, oh, a lot of, oh, wait, another question. Love these questions. Fortunate Pugs, the growth in his gums. Right now, we're not sure what to do his age. Ah, all right. So again, great. I'm going to read it. My 14-year-old pug has a growth on his gums. Right now, we are unsure what to do at his age. Not sure. So again, Pugs can live a while. I've had pugs go 16, 17 years. So first of all, the growth, what type of growth? Is it an epulis? Is it just a, what we call a gingival hyperplasia, which is just an enlarged area of gum itself? Is it somewhat movable? Is it pedunculated, meaning hanging by a, a thinner piece? So these are things we have to know. But having said that, as I'm waving to all of you, if the dog is healthy otherwise and no problems, bloods are fine, chest is clear, He's eating. Everything else is good. And it is causing concern based on the type of tumor or growth it may be. Is it getting larger faster? Is it getting in the way, basically preventing him from comfortably eating? Then if he checks out blood-wise, do it. Take it. Knock him out. I'm sure at that age, he probably needs to have his teeth clean anyway. And just get it done. Again, I don't hesitate based on age. Let's see. Uh, do I see birds in my practice? I do not do birds I really love them. I would love to have like a macaw or a cockatoo. I think they're great. My dad had a, one of the Amazon parrots called an African gray. Anyway, they're all, all super, super great birds, but you need a lot of specialized equipment and it's become such a subspecialty that you really have to know what you're doing. And I mean, I've trimmed beaks and I can trim nails. I, I can do feathers, but I mean, I wouldn't really become, let's put it this way. If I did, have my own bird, I wouldn't take care of my bird. I would go to one of the guys in town that does birds. So um, anyway, that is my take on birds. When I graduated, I was ready to do everything, letting the market dictate what I was going to do. And I went to work at this hospital I was working at as a technician prior to veterinary school. And um, he was 99% dog and cat. And that's, I was there for four years and I broke away, started my own practice, did my own thing for 30 plus years. And I've done some pot pigs. I've done some rats and hamsters and guinea pigs. You know, I, I've done some of the pocket pets, but um, I actually did, I did a, a liver surgery on a koi. It was really cool. But yeah, no, I, I, I'm pretty much dog and cat at this point. All right. I think uh, as we've gotten through our questions, if you have any more questions, you can always get a hold of me personally, privately, not a problem. Okay. So we're good. All right. Thanks for joining me here on Pet Life Radio here on Instagram Live. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope 2023 bodes you well. And uh, I hope it bodes me well too. And uh, and anyway, I will see you here next week. And then the following Sunday, we'll be live from the floor at VMX Conference in Orlando, Florida. I love doing the live show from there. I'm going to have Dr. Dana Varbel. Dana will be my guest. She is the chief veterinarian for the North American Veterinary Conference. And we have a lot to talk about. So looking forward to seeing you here next week here in LA. And then the following week, I will be live on the East Coast in Orlando, Florida. Have a great week, everybody. Once again, Happy New Year. And if you always get a hold of me, you know how to do it. DRJeff at PetLifeRadio.com, DRJeff at DRJeff.com, or send me a, a message here on Instagram Live or Instagram. All right, we'll see you next week. Be well. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.